Hey there fellow sketchers, looking for some new and fun ways to build your sketchbook. To be honest, I'm usually not all that fast about getting to the end of my sketchbooks because I sketch fast and if anything want them to last longer. But still, I totally get the feeling of satisfaction that comes from reaching the end of your book. You've done it, you've built the whole freaking thing. And I've got this old Muji sketchbook. I started it when I was in Japan last year and I've used it a few times for swatching and stuff like that, but yeah, it's just been sitting on the shelf getting no love, and I figured I'd finish it off today. So yeah, let's get started. Grab your favourite sketching tools, grab a cup of tea or coffee or whatever you like to drink, and let's get started on discovering some new and exciting ways to build those sketchbook pages. I'm Kat, I'm an artist and writer from Australia, and my dream is to sketch the world. Size number one, and this one's a fun one, you do need to have someone else involved with this. So if you've got someone around your house that you live with, that's really convenient. You can just ask them to help out, or you can, I don't know, drag in a neighbour, ring one of your friends, even ask online, but yeah. The whole point of this is to get someone else to select the objects that you're going to paint or draw. So I like to stick to three. Three is a great number. Get them to pick three objects from around your house or wherever you are. And then you can arrange them into, well, into the arrangement that you want to sketch. You can set up some lights if you like to, have some shadows and, um, Strong lighting makes the arrangement much more interesting. Another great thing about this exercise is that you can combine it with other exercises. I haven't here, but if you want to try out doing things like um, a negative space exercise where you're drawing the negative space around the objects, not the objects themselves. If you want to try like a continuous line drawing or um any of those kind of exercises this is great for it also if you want to just focus on practicing some skills like if your focus is looking at light or looking at perspective or the composition or something having that intention up most in your mind while you're doing this so that you can get that skills happening. I mean, this isn't the greatest sketch I've ever done, that's for sure. I asked my sister to pick some objects. She's really into gothic spooky stuff. That's something I'm not that great with, something I don't really do. So yeah, it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. It really got me into this whole other way of looking and thinking. And that's a great thing to get out of an exercise. So definitely try this. Tag me if you post it on Instagram so that I can see what you've done because that would be great to check out and definitely have fun with it. It's, yeah, one of those things that's going to vary so much depending on who you ask. And I'm the sort of person who always picks, if I'm doing a still life, always have the same objects, not the exact same objects. I love using just things with interesting packaging out of the pantry that's my go-to for still life i actually go and buy stuff at the market because i love the packaging and i want to sketch it so uh, yeah that's how much i do that kind of thing and this spooky skeleton scene mm, it was so much fun but so out of my comfort zone as i said Exercise number two. This is one of my favorite sketching exercises. It is so much fun. I call this blobbies. 
I don't know if you've tried this before, but if you haven't, definitely do will probably become one of your favorite exercises as well. You can do just about anything with this and use any materials, well, any kind of wet materials, wet media to get those blobby shapes. It can be fun just to, um, I'm doing circles, but yeah, make your shapes a bit more organic and random, especially, yeah, if you're using paint, you can just drip it or splodge it on to the page and get some really interesting random shapes. Once you've done that, I mean, you don't have to do people. You could do hats, dogs, animals of any kind, or even, I don't know, make them into weird teacups, make them into virtually anything that you want. This can be a great way to try weird and wonderful art materials as well. Maybe you've seen people using unusual art materials like coffee or um, organic things, organic things like, you know, you can get some stuff from your garden, flower petals or whatever, and mush it up to make art materials. I, yeah, not really into that because we don't have a very big garden. And if I started picking petals and things, pretty soon deplete the entire garden. But yeah, that can be fun. And then use those to make the little blobbies. It's also a good exercise to combine with using unconventional art materials. Like, um, I haven't done it here again, but using like a, maybe a sponge to put down the blobby shapes or something like that. Something that you find around the house, not a regular art material, not just a paintbrush. And yeah, you can do some really fun crowd scenes, play around with making people. This is also a fantastic exercise for using art bits of paint that you've got left over, especially if you're using watercolour or gouache paints that reactivate. You don't really need to have that much paint and, you know, you've got a little bit in the bottom of your pal palette, you don't want to waste it or you're too lazy to walk to the sink and clean your palette out, yeah, use up that paint and make some little blobby people or blobby cats or blobby blob blobs, whatever you want to make with them. Actually, using up the leftover paint's great too because you've already decided on a palette of colours for the painting you're working on and then you've got that palette going into this so the colours are going to work together hopefully and yeah it makes a fun scene it's also a good way to the character development if you do a little person that you really like do them again like use that as a basis for making a character if you're into that kind of illustrative illustrative process but for me it's mainly about fun and relaxation I can sit back switch my brain off and just create a nice crowd scene with various people and give them all little personalities and bits and pieces that's fun and so relaxing Exercise number three, bum, bum, bum. this is a great exercise if you've got like millions of photos on your camera roll that you've just forgotten about and you want to use them. I call it camera roll roulette where you go into your camera roll obviously and you just flick through the timeline or scroll through it. I'm using Google Photos so I just pulled the pin down at the side to a random spot and then find a picture there and use that as your sketching reference. So yeah, once you've done that, it's just sketching. <laughs> just taking that and doing a sketch from it. Nothing easier, but great when you're having a moment of what do I sketch today? I'm not really sure what I want to do. And also great if you're like me and have so many photos. And yeah, you think, oh, I'll sketch this one day. So that one day has come and we're sketching it.
one of the things I recommend doing on for this exercise for I feel bad saying this but this is a good place to actually cheat if you're like me like some of my camera roll is actually just photos of Uber Eats orders where I've got the wrong thing and you know you put in your complaint they want a photo um or you go out somewhere and you're having a coffee you take a photo of your coffee I have so many photos of coffee on my camera roll that yeah it's just unbelievable every coffee I've ever drank I've taken a photo of <laughs> Maybe not that many, but yeah, so you have some crap photos on your camera roll. That's what I'm trying to say. If something's really, really like crap, just move on to the next one. Move on and find something. But you know, don't go a hundred photos later, you're still looking. Maybe you give yourself three refusals or something, like until you find something you're gonna actually work with. Also, a benefit, side benefit of this exercise is that you get to clean out your camera roll. You can delete some of those photos, those crappy, blurry, or you know, another cup of coffee photo from your camera roll and start to feel a bit virtuous about that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm working on this picture. It's from Bucharest. I went to Romania. And I took a lot of the photos. I was writing a book set there, a vampire book, because it's Romania, of course. And I wanted an old derelict building for one of the settings. So I was taking a lot of photos for that. And such gorgeous, gorgeous buildings in Bucharest. And such a great setting for a book. And yeah, I ended up not finishing this sketch I will go back and finish it I'll probably put in my blog at the end of the month my um roundup monthly roundup blog but it's still it's not summer summer's over in Australia but it's still quite hot and I was sitting where we have the good light of course because I'm filming and it started making me feel a bit sick so I got almost finished and thought mm, need to get out of the sun now and put this to one side but I will come back to it and I will show you the finished result so those were my three exercises for filling up your sketchbook I hope some of these at least at least one of them is new to you and I'd love to see if you tried them out for yourself thanks for always thanks as always for watching and I hope to see you again next week. Bye.